God will defeat Trump and his prophets and all of those that stand by the nonsense. This video is very concerning and it's sad because we got to talk about it. Take a look at this clip and we'll get started. When the 2020 election hit, I had already had prophesied in August, documented prophecy that the election, that they would try to steal it through a planned chaotic thing. You've seen me show that prophecy hundreds of times, so to speak. That's exaggerated on Flashpoint. I also said that God has been raising up Donald Trump and that, that he would win. Now, people, if you listen to the lamestream news, why would they need to censor everything? Why would they shut down all your social media pages if you can test it, if they're not hiding something? If they really believed in election integrity, no matter what party you are or of no party, don't they want to fight for the right for election integrity? Because they're hiding something. It's obvious. That's why this man hasn't been opening his mouth, because Jesus said, don't. Don't do it. I went to my father's. I went to my spiritual mothers. I went to my board. I went to my peer level relationships and said, hey, there's a lot of calling out going on and my name's getting thrown out there. Uh, what do I do? Jesus told me not to say anything. They said, follow what Jesus said. You're right on. And not only that, we're your accountability system. And they told me not to address it. And so don't keep asking me to take the lead. I have. I've honored Jesus. I've done what he said. And I honor those that I'm accountable to, submitted to. And there you have our buddy. Who's that? Hank Kuhneman. Once again, he's talking, trying to explain his false prophecies, elevating and continuing to elevating a man, Trump and pushing conspiracy theories, won't let it go. And most of all, claiming that people want him to acknowledge that he's wrong and that he's been lying and all of these things and, and all of this stuff that he's got it wrong. And he says, no, I'm honoring God. You see, that's a problem. I've got another clip to show you. We'll talk about it here in a second because this is sad. This is why this video is very sad. Because I was sitting there thinking of all of these people. Some of you might have seen these polls that are out. I just saw the recent poll yesterday. 51% of Iowans, Iowans, I can't say it right, for this, uh, for their, uh, uh, you know, the, for the Republican uh, deal there where they're trying to get the nomination in Iowa, believe that the election is stolen. 51%. And that, and then there's another poll that had came out showing that people trust Trump more than their family members, religious leaders, and all of this stuff. And people has been now people are saying this is cult like cult like stuff, and it is. Take a look at this next clip I'm going to show you from a guy, so an, another pastor. And listen to what how he talks and listen to the elevation. Once again, how they're elevating this man. Pierce, let me just say this. Uh, th there's a reason why uh, President Donald Trump is leading in the polls uh, statewide. There's a reason he's leading in the polls uh, nationally. There's a reason why um, he is still the front runner, even though you had all of the, the, the fraudulent indictments um, that are coming against them, uh, you know, I can't, uh, led by the Biden and his uh, DOJ, which has been weaponized to essentially uh, interfere with an election, uh, there's a reason why the American people are still choosing Donald Trump, because he is literally the modern day Julius Caesar, right? It was the senators, the elite that killed off uh, Julius Caesar. It wasn't the common man. Donald Trump speaks to the common man, and that's why he's been a two-tier system uh, in America, and they're tied up, being led by people like Joe Biden and the Biden crime yeah, family. And there you have it, Pastor Mark Burns. We've talked about him. He's part of the all of them. These are pastors, folks. And it made me think that I, I went, I keep going back to similar Bible stories. For some reason, the Lord takes me back, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the Colosseum. When the Philistines were having that party. And this is why God is going to 
he's going to deal with the Trump prophets. He's going to defeat Trump. And it may not be, when I'm saying it, it may not be the, uh, uh, election wise or however, but there's going to be a spiritual defeat. That's what I'm talking about. For him, his prophets, and all of the people that support the nonsense and the conspiracies, the lies, and all of the stuff that they've been pushing. And let me give you my argument why. As I was thinking about, first off, when you, you, when you, let's go with this. A lot of you know the story of Samson. But let's look at, I was just thinking about where where the spirit where he didn't realize that the spirit of the Lord the Lord had left him. And I was thinking about all of these people that you see that go to these events that support this stuff that are totally lost and believe in all of the wild wacky conspiracy theories. Some of them may have been believed some of them may have been believers. Some of them, I can't believe that all of the millions of them, that's, that they're all not believers. Some of them may have been you know, believers, but they weren't rooted in following and studying the word like they supposed to. And they don't even realize that the Lord's hand is not upon them at the moment. They don't realize it. And then you have the others that they don't know the Lord at all, period. And they're, they're just totally lost. And that's what I was thinking. These are the types of people that go to these rallies and go to these events. These types of people that call themselves evangelicals, that believe that this man, Trump, is to be trusted more than a family member. I know that we can't trust all our family members. I know I got family members. We all got people that some owe us money. They never pay back. But because they're a family member, you let it slide. And things like that. We've got all of this family members, friends, you we know, and all of that religious leaders that you, you can't trust them all sometimes. Yeah, they've had their downfalls and stuff. But we've seen for some reason or another, regardless of what all of the things, the dozens and dozens and the thousands and thousands of lies that they've seen from this man and the religious leaders say, you know what? I don't care. I don't care what he says, what he does, whatever. All of this, I, I just know that I, I trust and believe and they've elevated him. Just like the Philistines did their false god, Dagon. And I'm going to talk, I got another message talking about Dagon. That's going to be in a future message that I'm going to talk about the god, Dagon, the Philistines, God. They, they elevate, that's the, the, their worship. And that's what they were doing that night when they were celebrating that day when, when Samson, when they bought him out to make a mockery of him. After they gouged his eyes out. After they set up there and, and, and they were able to just chain him up and have him working and having a party and laughing. And these people are the same type. These types of people that are, that are these phony pastors, these phony prophets, all of them. These are the types of people that are in that Coliseum. That's who they are. And then they bought other people in that buys into the nonsense. And they're there. And they're sitting there. And they're spiritually drunk in deception. Sitting there in the Coliseum. They're laughing. They're looking for defeat because they're thinking that God is going to do all of this stuff to their so-called enemies, and all of this stuff. And they're sitting there having a great party, not even realizing that the spirit of the Lord is not with them. And that's a dangerous place to be, a very dangerous place to be. And that's why it's sad, because you know what? These people, while they're sitting there, all of these false prophets that continue to elevate their God, they God, Trump, as in the form of they got that if they're elevating all of this stuff and they pushing him beyond Jesus, beyond the word of God, be, make him a, 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 a Christ like figure as if he can save everything. And all of these things around that, that, that the world will be so joyous and everything because if we get it this way, 
will live on happily off into eternity. And you know what? God is not going to allow that to happen. He may allow whatever happens, God forbid, if these nationalists get themselves in the office and take off and, and do all the things that they want to do. And, and they sit there and they think that they're going to have a great party. And, then, and it's going to be temporary because I was thinking of Proverbs verse 10. No, Bob, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 2, where it talks about you know, the, the, the wicked and, and, and this wicked, the gainfully obtaining gain by wickedness. That's what it's talking about. Obtaining gain by wickedness. That's what these people are doing. They've obtained their gain by wicked deeds. And what is the wicked deeds? Lies, deceiving people, all types of deception, using the name of the Lord in vain, using him for their, their other arterial motives. And, 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 and not, they don't, they're not, there's no elevating Christ and, and uh, worrying about souls and, and, and saving people and their families. They're more worried about saving somebody that don't even care about being saved. Trump's not worried about being saved or anything. He doesn't care. He was going to use and do whatever he wants to do with whoever. So as long as he could get the power, long as he could stay out of jail, all of those things, that's what's going on. And they're, and, and they're sitting there and, and, and they're not, he's not concerned about none of that. But these people that the, the follow the prophets and all of them, they don't care long as their bank accounts continue to grow, as long as their memberships and YouTube channels continue to grow, which puts money in their account. That's all they care about. They don't, they can care less about you. They don't care a darn thing about none of us. These nationalists are dangerous and they're sitting there in their Coliseum and bringing everybody in. And you know, guess what? I, 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 I believe Unfortunately, for many of them at this point, many of them are lost. They're going to be lost, lost forever. I've, I, that's why I said this video is sad. I just think they're, going to, they're not going to make it. Many will be lost. Many are going to lose, be lost for all of eternity, damned for hell. Many are going to be lost, the ones that were believers, and, and, and drifted off and got off into this nonsense. They're going to just live a life totally outside of God's will, totally never living up to what they could have lived up to and all of that. And that's a life unfulf unfulfilled is what it's going to boil down to. And it's going to be sad because just like Samson got in between those two pillars. And I was thinking, when he asked that the guard or whatever, can you put lean me up against the pillars? Can you lean me up against there? I, I, I need to brace myself. And all of that is what he said. And this guard, not thinking, you know, I would, you know, a lot of us would be thinking like, wait a minute. You know, if you were thinking like, wait a minute, this guy was strong. He killed hundreds of us. He, he, he was, you know, he could tear off the gates of the city and, and, and do all of these powerful things. He's got a lot of strength. I'd be thinking like, maybe I don't know why I need to keep him isolated right here. Yeah, see, but these folks, the spirit of the Lord was nowhere there with these folks. And they didn't even realize his hair began to grow. And that's the thing. Many of these people, they're so blind now, they don't realize anything. They don't see anything anymore. They don't hear anything anymore. And they're blindly going right to the slaughter. For the enemy, as the enemy welcomes them in. And guess what? That Colosseum is going to be come, come crumbling, tumbling down for them spiritually. And they're all going to be destroyed spiritually. And that's all we can do is continue to hope and pray that some that are waiting in the door to get into the Colosseum, that maybe they turn around 
as they see it crumbling. Or maybe that somebody notices that the hair is growing, that they see that the Lord is at work and that the Lord is showing them that they need to get out. That's what they, that's what all we can hope for. Because otherwise, there's a whole lot of people that are in big trouble. But, you know, on this channel, we'll continue to talk about it. We'll continue to talk about the issues the church run away from. We'll continue to take Satan head on and punch him right in between the chops. Evangelism for God is the channel. My name is Maurice Braxton. If you're new, consider subscribing. Hit like coming along for the journey. We'll keep marching forward. We'll keep praying. And we'll stand strong until the next video, my friends. Take care. God bless.